Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Tapping to the middle so we can go to the reports on the left and open the balance sheet report. One of the two faves. Go into the tab to the right, reports on the left. This time the other favorite report, the profit loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Closing the ham boogie, scrolling up to the top, changing the range. We're going to look at 2025 this time because it's got some blank space for us to put data in. 010125 to 123125. Run it. Nothing's there. That's what we want because we're going to put stuff there shortly. Tab to the middle. Close the ham boogie. Scroll up to the top, 2025 again, 010125, 123125, and run it. Okay, let's tab to the left. Now we're going to focus just on the sub uh, customers, which used to be called the jobs in the desktop view, and focus just in on it, remembering that the sub customers are closest related to the projects, which kind of supplanted or took over some of the things that you would prior have used sub customers for doing but sub customers haven't gone away and you could use these two things in conjunction with each other or sometimes uh, you might not have access to projects because you might have an earlier version or something like that and you might be using sub customers or you might have an older accounting system that basically possibly from quickbooks desktop that was transferred over or whatever or you were using it before they had the projects and you're still and so you'd be using sub customers possibly in that instance as well all right so if we go into the sub customers we're going to go down to the or up to the sales tab and we're going to go to the customers on the right hand side so the whole idea of the sub customer is that we're going to have our customers which if we're in a job cost type of system are the people that we're basically going to be billing for and then we'll have the uh, sub customers which will be the actual jobs that we are doing so we could have multiple jobs for one customer and then we can track in our financial statements the breakout of the activity by customer and uh, sub customer and track possibly like open and close jobs so we won't get into a too much depth on the on a job cost system now uh, in terms of the details of it but just to get a general idea we set up a sub customer last time Let's set up a couple more sub customers just so we can get a good feel for what the reports look like with the sub customers. So we've got, uh, let's add another one. I'm going to say another sub customer and I'm just going to number the sub customers as if they're going to be uh, job numbers. But of course you could put a lot more detail in the sub customers as well. I'm going to put, put 410 for this one. And then I'm just going to say it's a sub customer. I'm going to say it's a sub customer once again of customer number one. And I'm going to make it a uh, bill to the parent customer. So that's going to be the general concept usually. So now we've got our two sub customers here. I'm going to go back to the primary window. And so now you can see the two sub customers, which I'm basically just calling jobs here. Now we could also set up a new customer. And let's say this was. Uh, 415 if we set up a whole new billing item here we can make this for customer number one again and then again if we wanted to build the sub customer we can uncheck that and say build the sub customer this is going to be checked on by default so let's add that one and so now we've got these three sub customers or you might call them jobs as they would be called in the desktop version that are connected to uh, customer number one. Let's make a couple for number two customer. So I'll say add another one. Let's make this just a different number and structure just so I can differentiate them. I'm gonna make it a sub customer for customer number two. Okay. And then let's add another one. Add another one. Hold on back to my customer list. New again. Let's make this 512. And this is going to be once again for a sub customer for customer number two. Okay, so then the general process would be that we're going to be having expenses and whatnot that will come up that we're going to be 
applying to a long-term kind of job and we want to basically be able to break out primarily the income statement but possibly some balance sheet accounts as well by customer and be able to run uh, those reports so the general concept would be we'll make invoice type of forms and we'll make them billable so we told we turned on the billable option before so if you hit the cog button over here and we go to the account and settings then expenses on the left hand side and in the bills and expenses we said we want to track the billable expenses and items now you can also add a markup as you do that so you're going to have an expense it's going to pull over to the to the uh invoice and then we'll mark it up 30 percent per line item so let's just play with that while we're doing this so i'm going to say let's say done and boom and then as expenses come up uh we're just going to say let's add an expense i could hit the plus button over here without that opening now let's open it up over here expense form and we're going to say that we had vendor number one i'm just always going to use the same vendor just so it's easy and this is going to be as of 010125 and i have my location you know in nevada what, what i'm we're not really focused on the locations right now the tags and whatnot we're focused on just the sub customer so i'm going to say supplies again and, and traditionally what we would be purchasing is like cost of goods sold uh type of stuff if it was a long-term job so let's just set up another account and call it call it uh a, a cost of goods sold type of account cost of goods sold and we've got cost of goods sold labor versus rental let's say materials cost of goods sold save it boom and then i'm gonna say it's 2000 okay i'll keep it at 2000 it's gonna be billable and then we're going to assign it to the customer so it's going to go to customer let's say 400 again and so what's this going to do decrease the checking account the other side is going to go to the what we assigned here which i believe was cost to get sold on the on the income statement and then we're going to have it billable so it'll pull into the invoice and mark it up by that 30 percent is the general idea now note that as we do the markup because i just assigned it to an account which is the cost of goods sold account it's 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 gonna pull into the income statement using the the income account that's just kind of generated by quickbooks so we, we could do a little bit more advanced method using items that we might practice later but let's go ahead and save and close it and then we're going to go to the tab to the right and let's run it so if i look at a standard balance sheet now we got the checking account went down because that's what we would expect to happen now i could run the balance sheet breaking it out by customers <clears throat> and i've got a lot of different customers here so it becomes a long report that's one of the problems uh with this method and notice it's in here as not specified some of the balance sheet accounts again don't exactly break out perfectly by customer if i go back into this and check it out we've got our uh, expense report here and the customer is assigned so i'm going to close this out so balance sheet reports don't always work perfectly the income statement reports is really where the focus generally is because that's the performance report so if i refresh this this is the income statement before we break it out it's in the cost of goods sold 